Hello everybody! The We Play qualifiers took place a while ago allowing the public to play against the pros and possibly win some money while doing so. Today, we wanted to take a look at some of the more interesting standout decks that were used to qualify for the group stages. 14 players coming from Europe, the Americas, and Asia qualified to play in the top 32 group stage for the We Play Mighty Triad, Agility. They will be joined by the top 16 players from the last tournament, We Play Mighty Triad Strength, and two special invited participants. The group stage will be taking place between January 15th and 18th. The previous event was an invitational that primarily consisted of prominent figures in the artifact community and others who were active during the private beta. These qualifiers were open to anyone that registered, giving the general public a chance to compete. Interestingly, none of the players who qualified played Mono Blue. It's not entirely clear why, but it might be because they expected to see a lot of blue in the meta and decided on a deck that could handle the matchup well. Mono Blue has been thought to be the strongest deck in the current meta right now, and it is a surprise that not a single player made it to the next stage using it. It is possible that both Swim and Hyped will play Mono Blue in the group stages, which will be interesting to see as they lately have been taking the deck in interesting directions. Unfortunately, these qualifiers weren't streamed, so we will be using footage of related decks when discussing them. Here are all the players who qualified and the decks that they played. A majority of them ran some version of Green Red Ramp, which if you want to learn more about that archetype, check out our deck spotlight titled Christmas Ramp for more info. Today, instead, we will be focusing on the other unique decks that gave their players an edge in the tournament. First up, we have Blue-Green Combo from Stormlike, a fitting name for a Blue-Green player. Surprisingly, this decklist is essentially unchanged from the pre-patch version. The combo is obviously significantly worse from before since you can't reliably turn off the opponent with Gust. In addition, the changes to Jasper Daggers and stacking multiple heroes in the combo lane counters it greatly. Against Mono Blue, this deck fares well, as Blue typically doesn't like to have multiple heroes in a lane, so gusting them and popping off is much easier. In addition, having both Ramp and Hourglass works wonders. This deck isn't as strong as it used to be against Red Green Ramp, which ended up being a tournament favorite in the qualifiers. However, Red Green has trouble dealing with wide boards, which Blue Green specializes in. An excellent meta call that Stormlike took advantage of and succeeded with. Next up, we have a Blue Black Econ deck by Teddy, which is another powerful counter to Mono Blue. To put it simply, the matchup is a blue mirror, but your heroes have rapid deployment in the late game and the opponents does not. Rapid deployment will be gotten thanks to cards like Ironfog Goldmine and End One For Me, which will consistently get Vesture. You don't see much of this deck in constructed play because it is too all-in beating Mono Blue and struggles against other decks like Red Black. This deck doesn't have a Kana, so it cannot reliably build a board state and instead has to rely on Horn of the Alpha to close out the game. Thunderhide Pack does the job well but can get blocked out and shut down. However, in this case, I guess Teddy's pack always hit the tower. There are certain variations of this deck that run Bolts of Damocles instead of only Horns of the Alpha as their win conditions, which could be something to employ if you're expecting a more aggro-focused meta. Besides Blue, another monocolor deck that has been popping up recently is Mono Red. Featuring the new and improved Timbersaw, his signature, Whirling Death, is powerful in both helping your red hero survive longer and obtaining board control. Fight Through the Pain fills the same slot as Tidehunter here, providing a means to steal initiative back from the blue decks. Gela has Beastmaster as her last pick. While Primal Roar is pretty good, I think Gela has him there to be focused more on board advancement rather than the signature. In line with that strategy, she has quite a few creeps in the deck, namely two copies of Red Mist Pillager, Marofell Brawler, and Ogre Conscript. The rest of the deck contains the typical red package and some blue counter tech. On the other side of the same coin, Vin Kelsier's Mono Red instead focuses more on the heroes providing the aggression rather than the creeps. Highlighting this is the fifth hero choice, Centaur Warrunner. His stats are decent, but this kind of deck can really abuse his signature card. Plus 8 damage for 1 mana can be game swinging and pairs nicely with Phase Boots' ability to switch around and get the damage to the tower instead of the enemy unit. This deck has 3 copies of Enough Magic that are always welcome when expecting a control matchup while the three copies of Jasper Daggers covers the red-green side of things. Mono Red has been on the up and up lately, and it's proven here further by the results of this tournament, although the group stages will be the true indicator of whether or not this deck has what it takes to fight with the rest. As mentioned previously, Red Black Midrange is designed to beat Mono Blue, but unlike its brother in that regard, Blue Black, it's good against other matchups as well. It has hard-hitting heroes, powerful creeps, initiative-gaining cards, and everyone's favorite, Time of Triumph, which at this point could be a possible contender for balance changes. This is a typical mid-range build with nothing particularly interesting to note. The deck plays creeps and applies pressure consistently throughout the game, 
Smart ganks and chain frosts will be pivotal to your victory. Both Santa Chai and Shauna pilot this deck expertly in the tournament, proving how reliable mid range can really be. My favorite out of all of these, this red black econ plays differently from the old variation, opting for Vesture of the Tyrant instead of Horn of the Calling. This is again to counter Mono Blue. In total, this deck is an excellent combination of the early game power of the red black mid range with the late game sustain of Blue Black Econ. Blue Black Econ heavily relies on drawing track and payday early in the game to get their Vesture rolling. In the situation when Red Black Econ plays against Mono Blue, it can decide if it wants to go with an aggressive, board-centric game plan or a control vesture and horn game plan depending on what kind of hand it starts with. Against Red Green, you will need to draw your creeps early to pressure them, or else it'll struggle a bit more compared to the earlier variation, since track might feel like a dead card most of the time, and not having access to Berserker's Call makes it difficult dealing with multiple large units. The combination of both track and payday enables you to buy out your entire item deck as quickly as possible. And that concludes our brief overview of that tournament's meta. The groups for the group stages were announced this morning, and you can find them in the link in the description below. Let us know what deck was your favorite. Leave a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for future videos. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.